Hey folks, today I want to talk about one of the books that really inspired me to be an independent, self-published science fiction and fantasy author. And the thing is that it's not a book about the publishing industry, and it's not a book about science fiction or fantasy either. It's a book about the independent music scene in the 1980s in the United States. And it's a book called Our Band Could Be Your Life by Michael Azrod. And it's a profile of about a dozen or so bands that flourished in this space that I was already familiar with when I first picked the book up, which I think was around in 2002, but it was really great to read this and get lots of uh, in-depth details that I wasn't necessarily able to glean through any of the other uh, sources that I'd come across before. Uh, Black Flag is the very first band uh, listed there, and I was already very familiar with them because my wife was a huge fan of Black Flag and Henry Rollins, so that was an easy way for me to to, an easy excuse for me to pick up the book. Anything about them was always an instant win. But the book also covers The Minutemen, Mission of Burma, Minor Threat, Husker Du, The Replacements, Sonic Youth, Butthole Surfers, Big Black, Dinosaur Jr., Fugazi, Mud Honey, and Beat Happening. All of which were names that I was familiar with in one form or another. But again, to be able to zoom in and see all this fascinating stuff about their careers and all the crazy things that happened, especially the butthole servers. The chapter on them alone, that that made me ask whether whether the, when or when we would see a full book on them. So, I uh, I found myself devouring the whole thing in about the course of a couple of days. It was a wonderful read, and as I was reading, I kept noticing a pattern with a lot of these bands that was uh, impossible to ignore after a certain point. And it was a pattern that I was familiar with already from having read about other bands in the same spaces that were even further down the food chain. And the pattern went like this. You have a bunch of guys, or guys and gals, and they get together and they decide they want to form a band. And so they just get whatever equipment they can, they just figure out whatever they can do with it, and they just perform in whatever space they can find for whatever audience is listening. And they scrape together some loose change, and they get a record pressed, and then they sell it out of the trunk of their car at their gigs or whatever. Just, they don't wait around. And they don't try to look for the right moment to do things. They don't, look for, they don't look for validation and they don't ask for permission. They just go and do it for whoever's going to show up for it. And at the time, this was a really powerful message for me because I had this idea that the only way to really do anything in this space was to do it in a way that would, that would get validation from the right people or in, in the right space. And then you would be you would be one of the elect, as it were. And as time wore on, I began to realize this was a delusion that you could just do whatever it is that you wanted, just put it out there in whatever form you found attractive or, or functional or useful. And whoever showed up, then you just made a community with them and you just did it, you know, with them. There were bands that would come and perform in somebody's basement for six other people, you know, when they couldn't find a gig. And you know, to me, that felt like, uh, you know, just having a poetry reading with your friends, as it were. So this was also at the time when I started to look into self-publishing a little bit more uh, directly, and especially the, uh, the the mechanisms that existed at the time in the early 2000s. They were not very advanced then. Uh, things like print on demand and digital publishing were not in the shape that they are today. And so that kind of held me back at first. But by around 2005, 2006, 2007, around that time, things really started to take shape. And I said, the quality of the product that we're getting is really significantly better than what we've seen before. Good enough that if I, if I put in enough effort, what I could get from it would be something that I could, I could easily put side by side on the same shelf with any so-called professional piece of work. And today, it's pretty much indistinguishable. So that encouraged me to start doing some experiments in that vein to see what I would what I could get you know and the best part of it was that I didn't have to actually spend any money out of pocket um, at least you know not unless I wanted to get a proof copy or something and that was only a few bucks so I said this is this is really the way to go you know the biggest the biggest disadvantage is that it's really hard to get people to know about you but the main thing is that you're doing it for this for the sake of the few people that you that you have gathered near you and that are willing to show up for you and that you are happy doing it, because that was the thing that's that was the other thing that struck me about reading um, about what all these bands were doing is that they were doing this primarily for their own pleasure and satisfaction. They were doing it because this was what they wanted to this is what they wanted to be, and famous or being rich, uh, those those were a crapshoot, you know. 
Um, there's another band that's not talked about in the book, another one of my favorite bands, The Swans, and their, their lead singer was once interviewed, and, and the interviewer asked him something to the effect of, what do you think would happen if one of your records sold a lot of copies? And he shrugged and said, I guess I would make some money. You know, it was, it, the priorities were not, were not oriented around success along those lines. The priorities for them were, is this something that we feel like we want to sign our name to and put out there? And I realized after a lot of introspection that I felt the same way, that that was, that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be somebody who would, who would get this out for whoever wanted it in whatever space I could, as long as it was something I was proud to sign my name to. And that's a big, that's a big thing for me. That's probably the biggest thing for me. So again, the book's called Our Band Could Be Your Life by Michael Azrod. It is still in print. In fact, the the most recent editions in digital format are probably a whole lot easier to come by than this hardback, which I have I have hung on to after moving something like uh, four times now. So that's how much it means to me. It lives on the shelf directly behind me, and every now and then I'll pull it out and I'll read another uh, I'll read a chapter from it at random to get to remind myself of how all of this was just so spontaneous. You know, let's just go start something, and that's that's actually one of the best impulses you can have when. You live, in a, you live in an environment where so many things just seem to be pushed programmatically at you. And it's great to just have a certain degree of spontaneity. So that is one of the big influences on me as far as self-publishing goes. And like I said, it's probably not what you thought it was. Just thought I'd talk about that for a little bit. So see you around. <laughs>